G'day guys, Caleb from Happy Go Travel. Today we're starting a new project. We're going to be installing a dual battery setup into our Toyota Fortuna. So come have a look and we'll see how we do it. It's no secret that I love a beer while we're out exploring, out touring, when we pull out to a beautiful beach. So it's definitely time we've got a dual battery system. Now I know what you're thinking. How have I gone all this time without running power to the fridge constantly? So I will admit I've got a couple of tricks. With the old angle, I do always run it a little bit colder so it's colder than what I want. And if I'm going away for the night, I was always throwing frozen water bottles in it. So with the new dual battery setup, we're just going to leave it running and we're going to have no issues with it. It's going to be so good. So this is the plan. I'm going to make this the easiest setup I possibly can. I've got a slimline 120 amp hour AGM deep cycle battery, which I'm going to mount behind the drawer. So the brains of the whole operation is going to be a Red Arc BC DC 1225D. So what this does is it charges at 25 amps an hour. Um, and the D means it's got solar input as well. So we're not going to set solar up today. So love this little unit. Few, few reasons. One, it's basically the size of my hand. So that's good. Um, on the front, it's got a heap of different charge profiles. So what that means is it's pretty much good for every battery ever made, including lithium. And then yeah, it just gives you a couple of lights to tell you charge status. So whether it's car, solar, what stage of charge it's in. But yeah, basically tiny little simple unit. Going to bolt it to the side of the drawer. So once we've got it all wired up and installed, we've got a heap of good gear from Steady. So for those that didn't know, Steady don't only just make lights, they make a heap of 12 volt accessories and other cool gear too. So what I've got is I've got two dual USB um, outlets. So I've got two of them, and then I've got two SIG sockets. So the cool thing about the SIG sockets, I don't know if you can see that, but they're the marine ones, so they've got a lock point. So when you put your fridge cord in, your SIG cord in, it actually locks into place, so you don't have to worry about it falling out on rough tracks. So then I've got some holders for them. I've got a dual holder and two singles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one single at the back of the drawer with a SIG socket in for the fridge. I'm going to put another single on the other side of the drawer so one of the kids in the back can have power to their tablet. And then this dual one, I'm going to mount it down on the side of the drawer in here and I'll just put a SIG and a dual USB so that we can charge anything along the way. Of course, if Steady's involved, how could I not get some lights? So I've got some of Steady's surface lights, surface mount lights. So as you can see, it's tiny. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount them on the back of the tailgate. A little switch left over. So let's see if I can pop that out and put a switch in it. So when I've got the fridge extended and out, the little light will just be like a down light. So it should be a work light for us. So yeah, I'm hoping that'll be a good thing. In the back of the car, as you can see. So back of the drawer, fridge is just extended out. So this is what I'm gonna do, is the battery is gonna sit in here. So it'll just sit down on the floor, and then I'll strap it, secure it to the back of the drawer. But we've got a heap of high tensile bolts, which lock this back panel into place, which hold it all together. So what I did is I went down to the bolt shop, and I got a couple of eye bolts, which I'm gonna take some high tensile bolts out, and I'm gonna put these eye bolts in, and then I'm gonna use these straps to hold the battery in place. And with the BCDC charger, I'm just gonna grab it, I'm going to mount it just down there in behind the drawer so that you can still see all the lights. Once it's wired in, we shouldn't need to touch it again, so it should be right. You can see I've got some earth points there, which I can just earth it straight to the chassis. So it should be pretty straightforward. The cool thing that should be about this, we'll have a battery sitting here. We'll have one port there, one port around here for the fridge. Then we'll have another port up there. So it's going to need minimal wiring. The longest wire will be the wire to the BCDC from the front so that everything else is going to be in close proximity to the battery. So it should be pretty simple, straightforward to wire, which is what we're aiming for. Perfect. That's where the battery's going to sit. These handles come off, we'll take the handles off. And like I say, we'll just run a strap, two straps across the battery. It is important to secure it because it's bloody heavy. It's, um, it's about 30 kilos. So, as you can see, I've got four eye bolts installed in the back of the drawer. I've cut a scrap of rubber that I had lying around. So I'm gonna put that rubber in there and then that's gonna protect the back of the battery against the drawer. And then I've got these straps which I went and bought. Thread them through the eye bolts. And then that is what's gonna keep the battery in place. Beautiful. So I go anyway. I'll just cut these straps down, burn the ends.
If I ever need to thread them back through the cam buckle, it's easy. So, as you can see, fits nicely between the drawer and the chair. Just managed to squeeze it in there. Perfect. So, dual USB set up in the holder. So it's got a positive and a negative in the back there. Because we're going to be flush mounting that, we're going to drill a little hole in the back. And that'll give us the ability to run the wires through the back of it. So. Little pilot hole. Here is just some double insulated wire. So pilot hole in the back would be sufficient enough to get it through. Yeah, wiring. So a lot of people use would rather solder connections. For this, I'm happy to just use crimp. So just a lot of this so you can see. So we've got a negative and a positive connection. Uh, negative is going to be a white wire in this instance. Tuck it back in. So we just use a screwdriver, just to tighten it up to secure, and it's that simple. I've drilled a couple of holes here already. Now there isn't a lot of room at the back of the drawer, so you do have to be careful putting things in the back of the drawer. I will just use this little self-tapping screw. In the back of the drawer and we'll screw it into place. So this one here is the dual USB. So we got the Red Arc BCDC 1225D. So the D just means it's got solar. Now I'll just quickly run through the wiring with you. So when you get one of these Red Arc uh, BCDC chargers brand new, you've normally got a heap extra wire on it. So You'll have to excuse my wiring will look a bit different to others because it's it's um, yeah a bit shorter. So brand new ones got about a foot foot of wire on the end of it. But anyway, this it is what it is. So what I did is I got a I went and bought a hydraulic crimper to crimp the connections and we will solder them as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of solder in each as Red Arc recommends. So they want you to crimp it to make a mechanical join and then solder it for an electrical join. So. Red wire, now the way you wire it de will determine the profile of charge. So for us, the orange wire doesn't need to be connected. The blue wire will be connected to ignition because we've got a smart alternator in the Fortuna. Green wire will be run a LED, like a little LED LED to tell you it's working. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Solar, I've just capped the end of that currently, so we will eventually hook solar up to it, but not right now. Now the brown wire fused with a, um, I think they call them a MIDI fuse. One of these little guys, little 40 amp hour fuse. So now the brown wire will go to the auxiliary battery. So that's power out. The red wire is power in from the vehicle's battery. Blue wire to ignition, yellow wire solar, not going to connect that, black wire earth. So it's that easy, it's just four wires. So, And it's important to say that the red wire from the vehicle's battery, that'll be fused at the battery as well, the vehicle battery. So let's finish the joints, get it hooked up, and let's see if it works. So you see the Red Arc BCDC tucked in nicely behind the drawer. Let me just, just grab this torch. Let's grab my work light. Yeah, you've got an A profile. The car is on, so it's got vehicle and a flashing stage light. You've got the steady outlets either side of the back of the drawer. This one here is dual USB for the kids. So this one's SIG socket, we'll run the fridge off that one. What I did with this one is I've actually run some thicker gauge wire, so for the fridge. 
So I just, yeah, wanted, wanted thicker wire for the fridge. Um, the battery, I ended up just crossing the straps over just because they set battery on the corner of the battery. But yeah, as you can see, nice and easy. The battery sits in there on its rubber mat, got its rubber backing, ended up going with a fuse block. So we've got power in and then a heap of fuses and then it's got an earth bus bar on it as well. So it made it nice, easy to wire. And then around here, we've got 12 volt SIG and dual USB again. One of the cool features with our 12 volt project, we've put a couple of steady flat mounted rock lights on the boot, so as the lights, and that will act as light when it fixes that one. So as you can see, the table's lit up. Surprisingly enough, that light throws out here. How cool is that? So cool. That's totally awesome. So awesome. The last piece of the puzzle is this battery monitor. So I've got an iDrive BM2 um, battery monitor. So it's a Bluetooth battery monitor. It's an app for your phone. It basically just tells you everything about the battery. So simple, just positive, negative connection. I've just got some Velcro. So I'll Velcro it to the top of the battery, just out of the way. So there we have it. Just tucked on top of the battery out of the way. top 100% just tilted a bit so you can see it 12.71 volts battery okay so it tells you the status of your battery yeah that's a little iDrive battery monitor cheap as chips for a piece of mine bluetooth connectivity you can see from 10 meters away it works really good and then you know what your battery's doing at all times set up 12 volt power it's one of them things that now I've got it I wish I set it up sooner like to be able to have light cold beer not there's much in the fridge right now, but it's still running. I'm cooking dinner. I know beer is going to be cold. I've got my beautiful little work lights. Look, it's just amazing how much light these things put out. I've got to show you this right. So. Admittedly, the awning light is still on. So I've had a light in this awning forever and just never used it because I didn't have power. We'll do that, that's bloody unbelievable. It's so good. So what does a pro deal like this cost? Well, it wasn't cheap, I can tell you that. But it is worth every cent. So the Red Arc BCDC 1225 was around 600. The battery monitor was about 60. The battery itself was uh, 330. When you look at all the wiring, the outlets, I think all the steady gear, like the outlets, the lights, uh, probably was about 150 bucks there. The thing that catches you out is stuff like the fuse block, the conduit, the wires. So all that stuff, whilst it might only be three or four bucks a meter, it all stacks up pretty quickly. Um, I'll put an exact cost up on the screen anyway, but miscellaneous, whatever you think you're gonna spend, just double it. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, surely I can do it for cheap. I thought the same thing. I really did, but in all honesty, when you start looking around, you want to be able to rely on your gear. And when you think about things like battery chargers and batteries and, and all that is, I suppose when you're in the middle of nowhere, you want to know that it's going to work. You want to guarantee that that battery is going to hold the power. You want to guarantee that the charger is going to charge the battery. Um, you know, for me, spending extra money on things like having the ability to put solar in, even though I didn't connect it, I, I still think that it's one of them things that later on down the track I will want to do and I would have kicked myself if I didn't do it. So think about what you want to do now, think about what you want to do in the future and just weigh up the odds from there. Overall, very happy with how it turned out. Very glad I did it and wouldn't do it anyway any different. It's very important to note, I am by no means a qualified auto lecking. If you are in doubt, then you don't know your capabilities or you doubt your capabilities on it. Ask, go and speak to someone who is a qualified lecky. Go and speak to someone that can give you advice. And then, of course, if you still doubt yourself, just pay them to do the job. I wouldn't say this is the hardest project I've ever done. 
There's definitely a few swear words. <laughs> For me, this project was all about being simple. So I think we achieved that. I think anyone that can has a basic understanding of wiring, anyone that can use hand tools, it's pretty straightforward. If you can read the instructions on how to wire the BCDC, it's all pretty simple. So have a go. If you've got any questions, comment them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like I say, if you're in doubt, talk to an auto lucky, they'll be able to help you out. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.